Hello and welcome to Let's Code Physics. This is the first episode in a new series where we will be studying uh, projectile motion. This is where you send an object, uh, let's say a red ball here for today's example, into the air with some initial velocity and so, so with some initial speed at some initial direction and you watch the uh, trajectory that it traces out as it arcs through the air. Um, this is a problem that we teach in high school level physics, uh, but it's something that you can build on with lots of other things like drag forces and wind uh, effects and engines and lift forces and all kinds of things that we'll be adding in one piece at a time. Um, today I'm just going to set up the basic code for it. So I've already got my visual representation here. Um, I've got that set up uh, with this little snippet of code. Um, I've made the display large enough to fill the screen so that I don't have to resize it every time. Um, and then I've got my projectile set up as this red sphere here. Um, it's starting off a little bit to the left and at the zero point in the y direction. Um, we'll set it to z, to, excuse me, the z uh, coordinate to zero. I don't know that we'll be doing anything in the z direction, uh, but we do have to specify it there. And uh, I've turned on the make trail. What that option does is it allows you to see the trajectory that the, uh, that the projectile makes as it goes through the air. Um, so as I said, we'll need to give this thing an initial velocity. So we'll need to uh, projectile. There we go. So we'll need to assign it a velocity. We're just going to tack on to the projectile object um, a new property velocity. And uh, let's see, we'll just start out with one originally. So this is the initial velocity. Actually, I suppose we should call this the initial speed. And then we need to give it an initial angle. So we'll say projectile.angle. Actually, I suppose I want to call that speed, don't I? Because I want velocity to be a vector in just a minute. Um, and let's see, this thing likes to measure things in radians. So we'll say it's got a 30 degree uh, angle and then we need to convert that over into radians. So we'll make that a conversion, divide by 180, there we go. So here's our initial angle, and that's going to be measured from the positive x-axis. So that's measured from going to the right. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, and so then we can set up the projectile.velocity. So in order to turn the speed and, and angle into an actual velocity vector, we need to use the vector function. And so that's going to be projectile.speed times the cosine of the angle, projectile.angle, cool. And then the y component will need to be the same thing, but with the sine instead of the cosine. So cosine uh, will give us the adjacent side, which in this case is gonna be the x component. Sine gives you the opposite side, which in this case is gonna be the y component. And then again, we won't do anything in the z direction for right now. Now, this was a little bit wordy, but the good news is we only have to do this once because once we get into the um, update for this thing, um, we won't need to uh, we won't need to update the uh, velocity components individually. We'll just have it updated as a vector. Uh, speaking of which, we should probably get on to the loop. So when we think about this uh, ball launching into the air, we want it to be able to stop at the ground. We don't want it to continue to fall indefinitely. Um, now we might not necessarily want it to stop at the ground. We might try be trying to shoot it into a hole in the ground. Um, we'll work on that condition in a future video, but for right now, we want this code to run as long as projectile.position.y is greater than or equal to zero. Um, uh, that should be fine with this initial zero. It should run with that. Um, if it if it doesn't run at all, then that tells me we'll need to you know set this up to be a little bit higher than zero. Um, so what this com what this while command does is it says as long as the projectiles positions y component that is that is a, a, a whole mouthful of possessives basically as long as this value right here is greater than or equal to zero whatever is inside this loop whatever i indent in here is going to repeat over and over again until uh this thing is no longer true basically until this y component this y position is less than zero so we're going to go just slightly below uh, where ground level is so the first thing that we need to do is to calculate the force 
that acts on this thing. <clears throat> and uh, so what I'll need to do there in order to actually have, well, yeah, in order to do that, I'll need to actually give this thing a mass, so projectile.mass, uh, we'll just say it's one. And so for today's video, we're gonna just do the sort of traditional projectile motion experiment where the only force that's involved is gravity. So our force in this case uh, is go just going to be gravity, so let's call that gravitational force. And so that's gonna be a vector. Uh, gravity works down, so that means it has zero x component and zero z component. And the y component is gonna be negative projectile mass, ah, m-a-s-s, -S, there we go, times the, uh, times the gravitational field. So I need to define a gravitational field value. And let's, go with, uh, I guess let's do, let's pretend like we're on Earth and do 9.8 newtons per kilogram. So basically, uh, I, I haven't actually set any units so far. This 9.8 is now setting the units uh, to be our standard um, uh, metric system units. Uh, so this is going to be zero in the x direction, a negative value in the y direction, and then a zero in the z direction. Cool? Um, oh yeah, and then I need to actually have the force. So force is going to equal grab force. Uh, this might seem a little bit overkill in terms of I have I set the gravitational force and then I set force equal to grab force, but I want to be able to add other forces later, like a damping force or a lift force uh, or an engine force. Um, you know, later on I want to be able to add those forces. Um, right now those are just zero, so we'll just leave them off. So I'm, I have this line here so that I can add stuff on later. Uh, so the next thing we need to do, this force causes a change in the momentum of the, uh, of the projectile. So we need to update um, momentum. Actually, let's do it as, let's just update the velocity straightforwardly because uh, I don't anticipate changing the mass anytime soon. Um, I suppose if I put an engine on this thing, I'm going to need to have the mass changing. Uh, if that, uh, you know, if that, if, if we decide to go that way, uh, we'll update that later. Um, so the way the velocity updates is that we want the projectile's next velocity to be its current velocity plus the force divided by its mass, projectile dot mass. Yeah, there we go times however much our time changes by. So this uh, force divided by mass is sometimes called the acceleration. And when you multiply that by the change in time, then we have the update to the velocity. This is the amount that the velocity changes by. So it's old velocity equals new velocity plus the amount that the velocity changes by. And that reminds me, I need to actually uh, create a delta time. Uh, DT needs to be a small number. Um, so I usually go with like a, a 0.1 or a 0.01 to begin with. Um, the way you tell whether it's a, a, a too large of a number is you run the simulation once with one value, you run the simulation again with a smaller value and see if your results change. If your results don't change, then your first value must have been fine. If your results do change, then you need to keep decreasing until the results no longer change. And we'll start out with a time equal to zero. Cool. Um, although I suppose I don't need well, I, I, yeah, I'll keep track of the time in case I ever decide to uh, create a graph of something. So then we need to update the position. The position updates in the same way that the velocity does. You take the current position, projectile.position, equals the old position, projectile.position, plus it updates the same way now. We need something times dt. In this case, it's going to be the velocity, projectile.velocity, times the change in time. Cool, so it's new value equals old value plus the change. That's that's the basic idea behind this Euler-Cromer algorithm. Now you notice I'm not specifying whether I'm modifying the x, y, or z values. That's because vPython can keep track of these things as vectors. So this is a vector equals another vector plus another vector. As long as all we're adding is vectors, everything is fine. And I do have my velocity set as a vector and I do have my force set as a vector. So I should be good to go there. Um, and then we'll update, oops, and we'll update the time. I'm trying to keep my comments up to date so I don't have to go back and redo them. Um, and that should be all we need because the magic of vPython is that 
because this position is attached to the projectile that we defined up here, it will automatically animate this for us, which is pretty cool. So let's run our code and watch the uh, watch watch the animation happen. Okay, nothing seems to be happening. Did we have an error somewhere? Uh, let's find out. The program is still running. Uh, hmm, what did I do wrong here? Okay, so we got a projectile speed, projectile angle, projectile speed times cosine of angle, projectile speed times sine of angle. Okay, projectile position, projectile velocity times dt. Oh, uh, I wonder if I didn't give it enough of a speed. Uh, let's do this. Let's have it print for me the time. Okay, I think it didn't move anywhere is my guess. Okay, so let's try turning down the gravitational field. Let's make that simply a one. And what do we get here? Oh, you know what it is? Uh, I forgot one of the most important things to put in for vPython. Uh, <clears throat> actually, why don't we cut there? I actually forgot something very important. We need to put in a rate statement so that this thing actually moves at a finite speed. Otherwise, we just get the final picture. Um, so let's run this and see what we get. Okay, yes, it is arcing. Hooray. Uh, it is moving rather slowly. So, I see there's the make trail back there. All right, I think I can increase the rate a little bit. Um, I also added in this print time because the thing wasn't moving originally. At least I didn't think it was moving. So let's move our rate to 100. Cool, so there's our projectile motion. It did not go as far as I had hoped, but then again, I didn't really do the calculation. So it makes this nice arc going this way. I'm gonna make a couple of changes to make this thing easier to see. First things first, let's give it a greater initial speed. And then I think the size of the thing is a little bit too large. So let's decrease that to a 0.1. Oh, and there we go. And it is, now it is going much, much farther. All right. So basically the faster we, you know, it's kind of common sense, but physics, the whole point of physics is to put um, quantitative uh, analysis on common sense. The faster we shoot it, the farther it will go. That's pretty cool. Uh, let's maybe, split the difference, cut this thing down to five. Cool, so now we've got our projectile going this way. I'd kind of hoped I would be able to get it. Uh, so what I'd like to do is have it not have to zoom out. So let's try decreasing that again. Let's maybe make it three. I'd like it to just go the length of the screen. That would be nice. Okay, that's so uh, somewhere between three and five. Uh, that would be the number four, for example. Uh, can we get it to capture on the screen? Nope, all right, so somewhere between three and four. Let's try 3.5. Almost, almost, almost. Okay, so let's make one more adjustment. I'm just gonna call this one at 3.2, and I think we'll be good. Okay, cool, so we get a nice, graceful, parabolic arc. Uh, the reason we expect it to be parabolic is because the x component is being is, is being governed by constant velocity, so that's moving linearly with time. Um, in the vertical direction, it's moving like the square of time, so we're graphing something times time versus something times time squared. Um, I just got the verses backwards, my bad. We're graphing something versus time that, that's that's a function of time squared versus something that's a function of time. So that should give us a parabola like we get here. If we change the angle, uh, we'll get a different arc, of course. So let's try changing this to a, uh, let's go with a 45 degree angle. So you notice here we go up higher and we should go a little bit farther. Yeah, because we're able to go a little bit higher, we are able to go just a little bit farther. That doesn't always hold though. If I continue to increase that, like say for example, I make this, uh, let's take it to an extreme of 75 degrees, then so much of my velocity or my momentum is spent in the vertical direction that I don't get anything in the 
I don't get as much in the X direction. So this is pretty cool. Um, I'll I'll, uh, I'll leave this code in the description below for you to play around with. Uh, you can play around with the speed and the angle. Uh, we'll try a few more different scenarios next time uh, and also try working out if we can make it a little bit more interesting than just launching and landing at the same uh, vertical distance. All right, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.